Hello everyone. My name is Rehan Murzaeva. I am the senior lecturer of Baishev, Akhtubi Baishev University. I'll conduct you lectures in practical grammar. What is grammar? Grammar helps you to listen, speak, read and write an academic English language properly. Grammar is the system of a language. People sometimes describe grammar as the rules of a language, but in fact no language has rules. If we use the word rules, we suggest that uh, somebody created the rules and only then spoke the language like a new game. As it used today by many teachers and learners, grammar is loosely understood to be a set of rules that general govern the language. The words of every language fall into classes, which are called parts of speech. Each part of speech has its characteristic of its own. We distinguish between notional and structural parts of speech. The notional parts of speech perform certain functions in a sentence. Uh, of a subject, predicate, attribute, object, or adverbial modifier. The notional parts of speech are nouns, um, adjectives, pronouns, numerals, uh, the adverbs, verbs, the words of category of state, the modal verbs, and the interjections. The structural parts of speech either express relations between the words of sentences or emphasize the meaning of words or sentences. They never perform any independent function in the sentence. Here belong the preposition, the conjunction, the particle, and the article. Uh, different parts of speech have different lexical meaning. For example, verbs usually denote process, to work, to live. Nouns are names of object, table, boy. Adjectives are words expressing characteristics. Some parts of speech has different grammatical categories. Uh, verbs have categories of mood, tense, aspect, voice, process, person and number. Nouns have the categories of number and case. Adjectives have degrees of comparison. Other parts of speech are invariable. They have only one form. Here belong such parts of speech as prepositions and conjunctions. Uh, the uh, following part of speech uh, of which we are going to speak is the noun. The noun is a word expressing substance in the wider sense of a word. In the concept of substance, we include not only names of living beings, boy, girl, bird, and lifeless things, table, chair, book, for example, but also names of abstract nouns, qualities, states, actions, as kindness, strength, sleep, fear, conversation, fight, abstracted from their bearers. The noun has the following morphological characteristics. Nouns that can be counted have two numbers, singular and plural. Nouns denoting living beings and some nouns denoting lifeless thing have two case forms, the common case and the genitive case. It is doubtful whether the grammatical category of gender exists in modern English. Uh, because it is hardly ever expressed by means of grammatical form. There is a practically one, only one gender-forming suffix, the suffix es, expressing feminine gender. It is not widely used. And we can uh, give the examples. Here, here is, poet, poetess, actor, actress, waiter, waitress, and so on. The noun has certain syntactical characteristics. The chief syntactical functions of the noun are those of subject and object, but it also may be used as an attribute or predicative. The sun was rising in all his splendid beauty. Here we have uh, the word sun uh, as a subject. Troy and Yates follow the tourist. Here we have the tourist as an object, and he was an architect. Here we have the Sorry, here we have the architect as a predicative. A noun preceded by a preposition or prepositional phrase may be used as an attribute or prepositional indirect object and adverbial modifier. Uh, if we give the example, to the left were clean panes of glass. Panes of glass, here he is an attribute. Pique didn't answer, his throat felt too dry. He had heard of the police. Of the police here is an object. She went into the drawing room and lighted the fire. Here, into the drawing room, we have an adverbial modifier of place. Morphological composition of noun. According to the morphological composition, 
we distinguish uh, simple derivative and compound nouns. Simple nouns are nouns which have no prefixes or suffixes. They, they are indecomposable. For example, chair, table, room, map, fish, work. You see, you can't divide them into, uh, into uh, following meaningful parts. Derivative nouns are nouns which have derivative elements, as, such as prefixes and suffixes. For example, reader, sail, sailor, misconduct, and so on. We have a number of productive noun-forming suffixes. Uh, ER in the reader, IAS uh, in communist, S in Harris, actress, uh, NES in scalelessness, ism in socialism, nationalism, and so on. And we have a number of unproductive suffixes as herd, dumb, sheep, meant, ons, dependence, cruelty, t, generosity. You have the examples here in this very um, page. Well, uh, compound nouns, what are compound nouns? Compound nouns are nouns built from two or more stems. They often have one stress. The meaning of the compounds often differs from the meaning of its elements. The main types of compound nouns are the following, noun stem plus noun stem, uh, apple tree, snowball, girlfriend, pen friend, adjective stem plus noun stem, blackbird, blackboard, bluebell, blueberry, and so on. Uh, the next um, verb stem plus noun stem, we have pickpocket, uh, the stem of gerund or a participle may be the first component of a compound noun. Dining room, reading room, dancing hall, and so on. Well, classifications of nouns. Classification, uh, one more classification of nouns. All the nouns fall into two groups, into two classes, proper nouns and common nouns. Proper nouns are individual names given to separate persons or things. As regards to their meaning, Proper nouns may be personal names, for example, Mary, Peter, Shakespeare, geographical names, Moscow, London, Caucasus, the names of the months and days of the week, February, Monday, names of ships, hotels, and uh, clubs, for example, uh, Titanic, this is the name of a ship, Hotel Hilton, and clubs, for example, Manhattan. A large number of nouns, now proper, were uh, uh, at the period, at some period, or a bit earlier, uh, common nouns. For example, brown, this is the color, Karichivi, uh, smith, uh, profession, kuznets, mason, kaminshik, this is one more profession. Proper names may change their meaning and become a common nouns, vice versa. For example, George went over to the table and took a sandwich and glass of champagne. What do we have here? Sandwich here is the uh, name of a person who invented this uh, piece of a bite. And Champagne, this is a region in French uh, where those uh, uh, a certain uh, sort of wine was produced. Here we have, let's go to McDonald's and have a bite. Uh, here we have, McDonald's is a cafe, the name of a cafe, uh, which was given to the um, to the, uh, the name of the uh, person who invented those cafes was given to the cafes. And now it's a common noun. Well, common nouns are names that can be applied to any individual of class or persons or things. For example, man, dog, book, collections of similar individuals or things regarded as a single unit. For example, peasantry, family, materials, snow, iron, cotton, paper, or abstract nouns, kindness, development, uh, fear, love, tenderness. Thus, we have different groups of common nouns, class nouns, collective nouns, nouns of material, and abstract nouns. Uh -huh. Nouns denoting uh, things can be counted, and they are called countable nouns. Nouns denoting things that can, cannot be counted are called uncountable nouns. English countable nouns have two numbers, the singular and plural. The main type of the plural form of English are the following. The general rule for forming the plural of English nouns is by adding the ending s to the singular, pronounced in different ways. We have uh, several ways of pronouncing uh, of the ending s. 
as is after sibilants, noses, horses, bridges, as, as after voice consonant other than sibilants and after vowels, pens, beds, flowers, bees. If the noun ends in S, double S, X is SH, CH, O, uh, T is H. The plural is formed by adding ES to the singular, bus, buses, box, boxes, and so on. If the noun ends in Y preceded by a consonant, Y is changed into I before ES. For example, fly, muha, flies, muhi, army, armies, and lady, ladies. In proper names, however, the plural is formed by ending the ending S to the singular, Mary, Marys. You should note that if the final Y is preceded by a vowel, the plural is formed by simply adding S to the singular, days, monkeys, plays, toys. If the noun ends in O preceded by a consonant, the plural is generally formed by adding ES. Only a few nouns ending in O preceded by a consonant form the plural uh, in S. For example, cargo, cargoes, heroes, potatoes, echoes. But you should uh, bear in mind that we have an exceptions, pianos, solos, photos. All nouns ending in O preceded by a vowel form the plural in S and not in ES. For example, cuckoos, portfolios. There are a few nouns ending in O which form the plural both in S and ES. For example, mosquito. You may write down both just mosquito, uh, mosquito and mosquitoes. Well, uh, the following nouns ending uh, in F, in some cases followed by a mute E, change it into V, both in spelling and pronunciation. For example, wife, wives, thief, thieves, and so on. There are some nouns ending in F which have two forms in the plural uh, form. Scarf, scuffs, or scuffs, wolf, wolves, or wolves. There are seven nouns which uh, form the plural by changing the root vowel. Man, men, woman, women, foot, feet, tooth, teeth, goose, geese, mouse, mice. These uh, uh, words should be uh, remembered and you should keep them in your memory. And there are two nouns which have two uh, plural in N. Ox, oxen, child, children. In some nouns, the plural form doesn't differ from the singular. Again, you, you should bear with them in mind. You should keep them in, in your memory. Deer, sheep, swine, fish, trout. Some words uh, borrowed from Latin or Greek keep their Latin and Greek plural forms. Phenomenon, phenomena, de datum, data, crisis, crisis, stimulus, stimuli, and so on. Some of these nouns have acquired the English plural. Memorandums. Uh, Memorandum, I'm sorry, formulas, indexes. Well, in compound nouns, the plural form is for, uh, the plural is formed in different ways. As a rule, compound noun forms the plural by, by adding s to the head word. For example, editor in chief, editors in chief, brother in law, brothers in law, looker on, lookers on. If there is no noun stem in the compound, s is added to the last element. Forget me not, forget me not. Merry go round, merry go rounds. Some nouns have only the plural form. For example, trousers, spectacles, breeches, scissors, tongues, Features. There are, for the most part, uh, names of things which imply plurality or consist of two or more parts. Uh, the words billiards, barracks, works may be treated as singulars. You, you may just uh, say a chemical works and don't be afraid that you have some, uh, that you have made some mistakes. And the same with the word barracks. Words like uh, phonetics, physics, politics, optics, etc. <coughs> <clears throat> except in, uh, treated as singulars except in some special cases. The word news is usually treated as a singular. The news of a day was the invention of a new vaccine. Well, uh, the category of case uh, of the nouns, uh, case indicates the relation of the noun 
to the other words in this sentence. English nouns denoting living beings and some nouns denoting lifeless objects have two cases, an uninflected form called the common case and inflected form called the genitive case. The genitive case is formed by adding s, the apostrophe, s to the noun in the singular and only ap the apostrophe to the plural form ending a girl's and ending. A girl's look, a girl's school. Nouns forming their plural by changing the root vowel take the apostrophe s in the plural. For example, a man's hat, man's hats. Nouns ending in s form the genitive case in two ways. Dickens's novel, Dickens's novel. The pronunciation of the genitive case ending follows the same rules as the pronunciation of the plural ending. Sometimes the apostrophe may refer to the whole group of words, Jane and Mary's room. The last word of the word, the last word of the group needn't even be a noun. I shall be back in a hour or two's time. Well, that is all that we have to, uh, that I had to tell you about the noun. Uh, the next lecture will be devoted to the adjective.